Hi, Jimmy's problem. There's some. Um, a bank accepts 20,000 deposit from a customer on which it guarantees to pay an annual effective interest rate of 10% for the two years. So the customer needs to withdraw half of the accumulated value at the end of the first year, and the customer will withdraw the remaining value at the end of the second year. And um, the bank has following investment options, which may be purchased in any quantity. Any portion of the $20,000 that is not needed to be invested is retained by the bank as profit. However, the following would produce the highest profit for the bank and is guaranteed to meet the customer's withdrawal needs. Okay, so the first thing that we want to start off is what are we financing with these investment options? That for a $20,000 deposit, um, which it guarantees an annual effective rate of 1.10% for two years, the customer needs to withdraw. So the customer needs to withdraw half of the accumulated value at the end of the first year. Well, how much of the 20,000 has accumulated at the end of the first year? It would be 20,000 times the effective of 10%. So that would be, um, Yeah, it'd be twenty two thousand. Then once we get twenty two thousand, it says the customer needs to withdraw half of the accumulated value at the end of the first year. So the customer needs to withdraw eleven thousand at the end of year one. The second case scenario is that the customer will withdraw the remaining value at the end of the second year which means that if the customer already withdrew half of the accumulated value at the end of one year, then that means that the customer has 11,000 left, right? So the 11,000 that is left is accumulated one more year to the second year, which means that The customer would have to withdraw the remaining 12,100. Now, the second part is that we have to look at these bonds and see how they would match these uh, liabilities. And so, what we see here is that for bond H, it's a one year zero coupon bond yielding 10% semi-annually. Okay, let's focus on the one year 11,000, right? So bond H seems compatible because it's one year. Um, and bond J seems compatible because uh, it pays 12% annual coupons, right? So in order to exactly match the liabilities, we have to notice that um, we have to notice that the price that a bond H would exhibit in one year should be denoted as H plus the price, the annual coupon that J would exhibit in one year is uh, 0.12 J. Because uh, this bond H is just one year, zero coupon bond, one, two, it only yields 10% annually, whereas bond J pays out 12% annual coupons, right? So the H would be the price of this and 0.12 J would be the price of J bond J to finance the 11,000. Another thing that we notice here is that for the second liability, uh, we notice that bond I is compatible because it's a two-year bond. And um, so it's just I, right? No coupons paid out, just 
building a level person annu uh, annually and that this is also compatible as well. It's 0.12, but it's a two year bond. So that means that it's gonna sell at redemption. It's gonna compensate for the par value towards the end of the two years. So that means that instead of 0.12, it's gonna be 1.12J equals 12,100. So there we go, we exactly match the liabilities. Now, the third part is that we have to set up some sort of equation to that exhibits each of these bonds. So we know that for bond H, it's denoted as um, the price is bond H is denoted as yielding 10% annually, and it's only for one year, which means that it has the potential to discount by the effective rate of only 10% by one year. The other one is that for bond I, uh, it, it yields 11% annually for two years, which means that it has the potential to accumulate or discount by two years. And another thing is that for J, it's a two year bond that sells at par with a 12% annual coupons, which means that uh, bond J is just denoted as J. At the full price up until time zero. So now we just so we accumulated all, no, we just, we put all of these bonds in discount form to find the true price of it all. And now we just want to um, use the equations that we formed here to solve uh, the amounts for whatever the highest profit that the bank needs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take I'm gonna set H equals to 11,000 minus 0.12 J. Right. And then I'm gonna set I equals to 12,001. Hundred minus one point twelve J squared, right? Now then it's just J. So now I could uh, simplify it, right? So what could I do to simplify it? Well, hmm, I could do 11,000 divided by 1.10, just says 10,000, 10K minus, which is uh, 0 0.10, Nine zero nine J plus nine eight two zero dot six three minus Is point nine zero nine zero J plus J combined. So I could put, I could combine ten K and this amount.
equal 19 I could also combine the J's, so I could do negative point ten nine oh nine uh minus point nine zero nine zero plus one which would turn out to be minus point zero one eight zero nine j now what i'm gonna do is that then i am gonna see that uh, i'm gonna take the twelve thousand one hundred and i'm gonna and once i do that to so i'm gonna first find the largest amount of j right so what i'm gonna do is that i am gonna take the 12,100 that is most compatible with j and then divide it by 1.12 because that is the par amount at the end of two years for J. And I'm going to end up getting ten eighty three point five seven, right? And then uh after i do that i'm going to take what j is and i'm going to figure out what h is equal to right so i'm gonna put j into here to find out what h is equal to here so I'm going to do times 12, oh no, times 0.12 minus 11,000. So J H is going to be 9,703.57. But that is H uh under one well that is that is the price of h but we would have to discount it by one year 10 percent annual which would make it 1.1 so we would divide it by 1.1 and we would get a h to 1.42 Right. So yeah, we get these two amounts, this for H and this for bond J. So now the fact that we could just solve simply solve for um H and I and J in this case is that it just shows the concept of how we could make this a whole equation and just see how the relationship of these bonds compensate for what we write here. So for one year, zero coupon bond, 10% annually, that means that it's able to be discounted by this much by one year. Two years, zero coupon yield 11%, which means that this bond is able to be discounted by this much in two years. And then a two year bond that sells at par, it's just at J. Same for these equations when for H and I, there's no coupons. 
but for uh, J, there's a 0.12 coupon paid out, and by the end of two years, there's a 1.12 coupon being paid out to match up the uh, liabilities that we need to compensate for. So again, what we found here was that bond H is uh, 8821, whereas uh, bond J is 10,804, which means that E is going to be the answer.